I'm Brian McCreeth at GBH in Boston with composer Ivan Rodriguez. And Ivan, it's great to have you here as part of El Puerto Rico, the project with the Victory Players and your piece, Inert Transmutation. Fascinating title and a boy, what a, what a heck of a piece this is. Wow, it's a really intense experience. We'll get to that in a, in a minute, but first let's talk about that title. It's such an odd combination of words. And um, you say in your notes about the piece, it has a lot to do with identity and the identity of being Puerto Rican, but also experience on the mainland and what that means to you as a person, who you are. Um, so can you unpack the title a little bit and, and tell me what inert transmutation is? Right. Uh, actually, this piece is, I wrote it, and it was a very important experience for me precisely because of that. Uh, I basically grew up my whole life in Puerto Rico. So I, I lived there for 24 years straight. And all of a sudden, life took a turn and I had to move to the mainland, right, the US. And uh, when, you, when you're part of the, any country's diaspora, you are experiencing another world, right? Uh, even though you're a citizen, you know, and, and that carries with it a whole bunch of different things, you know, not only a different place, but a different meaning of a place. Uh, you acquire a different meaning. I, re I even remember that in Puerto Rico, I was just Ivan Enrique Rodriguez. And when I came to the US, for the first time I noticed I was brown. So there are a whole host of things that suddenly change about you that you notice they are different, the, the understanding of other is different, but you stay the same. For example, now that I've been living for more than six years here in the, in, in, in the US, uh, I, I say that in, in the US I have a house, but not necessarily a home. And I find myself here, I go to the supermarket here, I know, you know every corner of my neighborhood, the local pizzeria that I think I go too much. <laughs> and and uh, I, find, I, find I find myself comfortable there, you know? And I have a memory of Puerto Rico and I visit Puerto Rico. But every year I spend here and then I go back, more of the Puerto Rico that I left, it becomes more of a memory, you know? So, but that doesn't make me less Puerto Rican. You know, I still am Puerto Rican because that's part of my being. You know, I exist because I was born there and I was there. But all of a sudden, that place that no longer I have a house there, which is still my home, changed. Because the things that I remember are not necessarily there anymore. And people got older, people's lives changed. Uh, my attitude changed. You know, I spent my whole time in New York and... When I go back to Puerto Rico and I go into the doctor's office <clears throat> or any place, everyone gives me the good mornings. Imagine doing that in New York. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, th there are so many things that change. And yet when I look in the mirror, I see the same person. So in this piece, I try to, to take elements of my Puerto Rican-ness, if you will, and try to stretch them to the point of breaking without changing them, you know, in, in different environments, in, in different, uh, you know, developments, musical experiences that kind of invoke that uh, emotion or turmoil or sometimes calmness of experiencing something new or noticing that wherever you go, you're still yourself. And there are things that change or there are things that appear to change, but they never do. Your, your writing and, and now you're speaking about this aspect of your music brings to mind for me the idea that when one goes to live abroad in any other country, um, you do have this experience of, as you, as you talk about, um, having a house but maybe not a home in this new place, um, even if it's just for a short time. But you also uh, gain a perspective on where you've come from that you never would have had otherwise. 
And so you, you describe the way that every year you're away from Puerto Rico, they become, it, it becomes more and more based in memory. But what else happens uh, in your experience? What else have you come to know about Puerto Rico that you didn't know before in these last what, six years, I think you said, right. that you've lived on the mainland? You know, people say that hindsight is always 2020, right? <laughs> uh, it, it, my, my music was very, let's say, um, it was very based on classical music tradition. Uh, it, has, it had, you know, I, I worked very hard to develop my own musical language, uh, but it was that when I was in Puerto Rico. Uh, but once you move out and you look back, all of a sudden nostalgia, uh, memories once again, food, <laughs> people, you know, all of those things come together and when you don't experience them as much as you used to, you notice that you took them from, for granted, you know? And then all of a sudden this sense of identity bursts. You're no longer, you don't, you don't put, the, put it aside. And, and, and I mentioned this more so in music <clears throat> because there is this, there's this, this, at least in Puerto Rico that I've experienced, there is this bizarre stigma that uh, you do music, but there is a divide between folk music, popular music, classical music, and you don't mix the two. Even when most musicians in Puerto Rico work in most of those areas at the same time, you know? But you don't really mix them. But when you're outside, all of a sudden you the way you express yourself, whether it's poetry, painting, whatever type of art or what, whatever you do, all of a sudden you feel the need to integrate that part of your identity in. But how? How? Is it your personal experience? Of course. But what else do you share if it's not that same folk music, that same, you know, collective ideal of what Puerto Rico is? And I, I did notice that, you know, I was, and, and I've, mentioned this, it's hard to admit, and I met, I've mentioned this to many people, I've been going through a reckoning regarding what music is or what music means to me. Uh, I came from a very strict, uh, you know, uh, learning process of music, and uh, the, the, the concepts were very, very strict, and this is music, this is classical music, and you follow this tradition, and then we dare to call some correct or incorrect, you know. Uh, but then when you go through this experience and you notice that maybe honesty is more important and, and not even more important, it speaks without you needing to explain anything else, then you begin to, to accept, integrate, and, and play with elements that you put aside as, you know, that image or that uh, element that only we took out during Christmas or, you know, Thanksgiving or things like that. So that, that was a very strong thing that I noticed once I spent more time here. Now, we're, we're discussing all these issues in a sort of lofty, almost philosophical way, almost contemplative. Um, and then we turn to your music and it's, there is tremendous energy flowing through this piece of music. And so I want to I want to propose that the way it comes across to me is that your process this this struggling or or reckoning with identity it's not a peaceful process. And that's translated into the music I suppose. Correct. Uh, and uh, there are many indications in the score, you know, that you know that there are moments that say doubtful or you know, uh, abrupt. You know, there are a whole host of words that I use, uh, precisely trying to convey that. Because, and you know, it's it's very it's very important. And I think it's important to speak about this. Uh, it it is not a peaceful pro uh, process, but it's even less peaceful when you go through experiences that only you go, you know, that only you're able to go through, meaning. 
going back to the same uh, thing that I mentioned earlier, noticing that I was brown for the first time. You know, all of the, in Puerto Rico, we had this idea of collaborating, of working hard, et cetera, and all of a sudden you moved to the U.S. thinking who you are and what you want to bring to people, what you want, and more so in classical music. No one thinks of making a living out of this, you know? <laughs> no one thinks of that. So what's the other part which you just want to share? You know, the only, why would you put something on paper? Why would you go through the struggle of having all that music in here and writing it on paper? You know, why would you do that if it's not to share it with someone else, right? You want to share, but all of a sudden, there's a barrier that it's inherently entangled with your identity that you can't shed off. You know, and how that, you know, abrasive is putting it lightly, you know, and that, that process of coming to terms with your identity uh, and precisely a Puerto Rican identity that has so much history with the United States and even more so recently, you know, it's too much to say the least, you know? So putting all that energy in, sometimes, you know, a storm is uh, a, an accurate way to represent things. There's one incredibly striking part of your piece that you, you probably already know what I'm gonna ask you about, <laughs> which is this piano cadenza. Yes. And oh my gosh. Um, I, I just, I wonder what you can say about the role of that particular uh, section of the music. What, what is the role of that within the piece, if, it, if, it, if you can distill it into something verbal, uh, at least in terms of contextualizing it? Um, it is so striking, you know, uh, that, that I have my own sort of reaction to it, but I also don't want to overinterpret or anything. So tell me about that, your decision to write to, to include that, that incredibly virtuosic, but also very intimate part. I mean, I, I guess what I want to say f for any viewer who hasn't actually heard the piece yet is that there's a, there's a dropping out of the, the rest of the ensemble for this piano cadenza that, um, that is stark. And I don't want to go too much further than that because I, I, I don't want to color the experience, but it's really, it's really striking. I wonder what you can say about it. Well, there are many angles for this. Uh, first, uh, I had, you know, my training in music was saxophone, violin, and piano. So I identify with the instrument, number one. Uh, number two, the role of that cadenza there. Uh, the whole piece is predicated on two different elements. Uh, a Puerto Rican song called Lamento Borincano, or Puerto Ricans, or Bor Borincans Lament, uh, I use snippets of uh, that song and I elaborate on it. And the other element is uh, the bomba rhythm sica, right? It's the whole piece is played with those two things. I take those two uh, elements as signifiers of identity and I put them through, and I think you coined the term very, very well, stark process uh, in the piano cadenza as the character, you know? And why I say that this, because in the end, after going through that, you know, it's, it's, it's transformative, but, but it's that transmutation with the growing pains. You know, you, have, you, you need to have the growing pains. Why? Because if you don't have the pain, how can you appreciate the good or the painless, you know? Right after the cadenza, there is an apotheosis of the piece with the theme of, uh, you know, the, 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 the motivic theme of the Puerto Rican Flament uh, in this very grand, you know, presentation, you know, this almost conclusive, we, we got here, this is it, we finally solved the issue, this, this is it. Uh, after that moment, there is a little more, you know, a tale that leaves a question open. But the role is basically that, you know, you go through the experiences in the piece and you, you, there is a moment, there is an, and I think we all go through this, whether we encounter a problem with identity, whether we encounter a, a family issue or the first time we experience death, 
you know, all of those things mark a moment in which you need to abstract yourself and only you can deal with it. You know, there, there, it, you can have input from many other sources, but only you can deal with the issue. So that's why I leave a, a solo instrument. But, you know, I have a, a bunch of musicians. Why the piano? Well, the first time I came to hold you for the, uh, with the Victory Players for the festival, I just clicked with Nathan. <laughs> And we spent a whole lot of time together and we laughed about a lot of things and we, you know, we, you know, talked about many things. We stayed up all night and we had similar, you know, ideas about music and identity and a whole bunch of different things. He went to Juilliard. I'm, I'm finishing my, my, doctor, my doctorate in Juilliard now. Uh, so we had many elements that just connected for, for each other, and then I saw him perform, and I was like, <laughs> I, I know what I can put you through. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I decided to write it for him, and actually, even the, the, the conductor scores has a, you know, the word cadenza for the conductor to know that there is that moment, but the individual part has to Nathan, you know, I dedicated the cadenza to him. That's beautiful, and 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 illuminating. I mean, both in the in the way that the, the the role is played by that particular part of the music, but also by the very personal connection. Well, and I think it's very important because you know people tend to, and this is part of the problem in music education. People tend to uh, elevate composers into this you know Olympian stage of wisdom and genius, right? That's nonsense. We're just putting dots on paper because we like music and because we want to share something with people. They are playing it. You know, I thought of that and he is going through the hassle of putting it together. You know, so if I, I, I we wouldn't be anything without the performers. So my best way to, to you know, say thank you or give that nod of, of I appreciate your, so much your commitment is to do things like that, you know, highlight something that I really appreciate because without any of them, I couldn't, you know, I wouldn't exist. <laughs> well, those are, those are wonderful thoughts. And yet, in spite of that, I will say thank you to the composer <laughs> for doing all of that work. Ivan Rodriguez, so good to talk with you. Thank you so much. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs>